So we talked about going faster, um, you know, and I, I want to talk about the concept of, um, of lanes and parallelization. So just using 400 gig as an example, with 400 gig, there's many ways I can go do this. I can, I can build it up as 16 lanes of 25 gig all the way up to four lanes of, of 100 gig. And any and all of those combinations can probably be um, bought or are being worked on right now. Um, obviously, if you can think about trying to figure out how to put 16 lasers inside one of these packages, you can understand the challenge there. Um, 16 electrical lanes, not, not as much of a challenge as on the PCB, but again, it's, it's, it's connector space, those connectors are larger. Um, as we've moved up in speed, obviously the technology we need to go do is harder. This is the third steps I was talking about. Um, with, with 10 gig, we've been down in NRZ. Um, with 25 gig, everything's still NRZ. Once you get into the 50 gig space, um, it could be NRZ, it could be PAM4. It's generally PAM4, but there are still people that believe NRZ is the right technology. So there you got a little bifurcation going on in the industry. But once you get above this, most people are believing that both for optics and for electronics, the PAM4 technology is, is the right technology. And so just um, to try and explain PAM4 in a simple way, um, I, I don't know if this will be successful or not, but you know, NRZ is just a simple sending of one and zero, one and zero, and you end up with these eye diagrams. This is sort of when you overlay all the bit patterns together, you get these nice eye diagrams. And so making a decision between a one and zero is you know, how much space is there here uh, in between the two, and, and we can figure that out. Um, with, the, with the PAM technology, we, we take two bits together, and, and we, use those, we combine those to create a level, and you have four levels, and you get eye diagrams like this. And as I said, the, the advantage is you get twice the data capacity for the same speed of components. Um, and this allows you to use less components, um, use less fibers, use less wavelengths, um, but it does mean you have much more complex receivers because you have to go figure out how to, well, I'm pointing on this screen here, sorry. You have to go figure out how to separate in there and undo the effects of, of the transmission that's going on. Uh, so finally, the, the, the FEC forward error correction. Um, I, I talked about this briefly already. There's a lot of advantages for this, uh, the main one being that you can use lower quality uh, components to get what you're doing. So typically, if you want to operate with a bit error rate of 10 to the minus 12, which is typically where most people want to operate, or even better, um, you would typically have, you know, the quality of your signal has to be, you know, very high to make sure that your receiver can, can go do that. Um, if you're using FEC, this, you get this coding gain effect, and so you can actually operate sort of up here with this, you know, relatively crappy um, set of components. Not oh, crap, that's the wrong word, but lower performance um, components. And, and when I say lower performance, this is like if I'm trying to do 100 gig, I don't need to have a components that can do 100 gigabit. I can use uh, lower speed components. Um, but through the magic of, of my coding gain, all of a sudden I'm back down here and I'm operating in a, in a fantastic error-free zone. Um, so, of course, that's all great and good. It adds some latency. You're doing some compute on there. That adds a little bit of latency. It adds in, in the things I'm talking about here, 50 to, 90, uh, 50 to 100 nanoseconds. Um, but with, you know, it's equivalent like five to 10 meters of, of transmission over the fiber. Um, so finally, kind of bringing this together, the, the, the other thing that technology tool that we can use is, is bi-di, bi-directional. And so we talked about you putting multiple wavelengths on a fiber. This is putting one wavelength on a fiber going uh, one direction and another wavelength going the other direction. And this is a way of um, allowing us to figure out how to use that parallelization that, that we talked about, but to support customers that don't have extra fibers in their networks. So if you have um, duplex uh, fiber in your network, how do, how do we use these low quality, or sorry, low quality, lower speed components um, to get you the higher speed rates? And so um, we can talk a bit more about you know, the, the buy die. So um, we've been shipping this 40 gig buy die for quite a while in the multimode space. So it's 20 gig. Um, on each fiber going out in both directions. And uh, we recently announced this uh, 100 gig by die, which also does 40 gig at the same time. It can software select back and forth, but same idea. Um, but in this case, we're using the 50 gig PAM4 tech uh, modulation instead of the 20 gig NRZ. So I think I'm wrapping up on my section. Um, we can utilize all of these options to create all of these solutions. Um, 
within the single mode space, we can do single wavelength, we can do multi-wavelength, we can do duplex fiber, we can do parallel fiber, and then you have all of these solutions. In the multi-mode, exactly the same thing. You can have single wavelength, you can have multi-wavelength, um, you can use parallel fiber, you can use uh, duplex fiber. All these combinations exist. MSAs and standards are all popping up all over the place to create all these things, and, and it um, creates a, a bit of a mess. But I'm gonna stop right now um, on the technology piece, I'm going to hand over to Errol. Keep going. <laughs> Keep going? No, no, no. So, over to you. Um, so Errol will talk about the line side stuff, and then we'll come back and try to talk about how this all comes together. That's your pointer. That's your change. Ooh. Left, right. Left, right. Oh, fantastic. It's a pretty quiet audience. <laughs> this is really cool stuff, but uh, so, oh, any questions? One more. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of a lot of people looking at multi-core fiber. Um, it's largely being considered in the in the in the long haul line side stuff because you, you, if you're digging up a trench across the country, you want to put fewer fibers in. Um, I would say it's a technology that's still a lot of people thinking about how to go use it. It 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 fits actually quite well with the silicon photonics technology in theory because you can line that fiber up once and get multiple cores out of it. I, I wouldn't say there's been much traction yet on, on it actually being deployed, but I think there's a lot of people looking at it closely, but it's a bit too early yet to see product based on it. Uh, well, optics is, I mean, everything in Drews is, how do you answer that? <laughs> yes. Short answer, yes. Yes, yes um, because of the FEC. As, as we're trying to add more complexity, like the, the PAM4 and all the receive equalization and then digital signal processing, we'll be talking about that in a bit. Yes, there's more latency going in. You know, the, the FEC itself adds latency. Um, absolutely, that's just a consequence of going to higher, higher speeds. The, the channels themselves are not great or they've got limitations, so you have to overcome those limitations through whatever means you have. And in the electronics domain, if you're doing anything in the electronics domain, it's adding latency, right? And so a lot of time, a lot of the standards efforts um, are all down to um, trying to keep that latency as low as possible, but achieve um, the cost points or, or the, um, the targets we're trying to hit. 